First of all, um, team news. I know that you'll have had people coming back from international duty. Just the early situation as you see it in terms of your players. Well, there is still a lot that uh, I haven't seen yet. Uh, we will see them this afternoon and um, assess the squad tomorrow, see how everybody's feeling and uh, make some decisions. But so far, no, no big news. So no major concerns that you're aware of before they come back to be assessed? Not yet, no. And what about Bakaya? What's the latest with him? Well, he hasn't trained with the team yet. Uh, he's been doing some individual work. Uh, we have to pull him off of the England squad, unfortunately. Um, but he's feeling better, but he hasn't trained with the team yet. Um, the international break, given the hectic schedule, gives you maybe a bit of time to assess how things have been going. Um, have you had a chance to have a look at what's been going well and maybe what's been going not so well? Yes, uh, obviously we analyse um, periods during a season and we've done that uh, because we have some time to think, reflect and see a lot of things that we are doing and, uh, and as well the direction we want to take for the future, of course. And I know that you said that you can't have two faces. I think that was referring to the defensive side of the game against uh, West Ham. What are the main areas that you need to rectify at the back to improve that record? What have you identified? Ma, one of them was related as well to the attention focus uh, that you need uh, during uh, the whole game. And for example, the way we can see the second goal when we turn our backs in a free kick uh, close to our box is something that we cannot do because it just gives a goal to the opponent. Um, and there is the other phase that, um, that we really like, the way the team played, the way the team reacted, the character that we showed and the quality. That, uh, that we provide on the day as well to come back uh, against a really good opponent from three goals behind. West Ham punished you for your defensive uh, errors and lapses and you certainly can't afford to be like that against Liverpool who, despite their struggles this season, are still very potent going forwards, aren't they? Absolutely. You know, against uh, these type of teams and the quality that they have, they're going to punish you for every error that you do. Even when you don't make errors and you do everything perfect, they are still able to, to break your lines, uh, to create um, an individual action to score a goal. So obviously there is um, a team that uh, nothing has to be given to them. And given how far ahead of everyone Liverpool were last season, given that the gap between you two at the moment isn't that big, do you take something from that? The fact that you know, you're not that far away from the team that were runaway champions? I prefer to look at ourselves. Uh, what they've done in recent years uh, has been incredible. Um, obviously, the competition that they were facing with Manchester City has made both teams better. Uh, I think they've been pushing each other to a different level that probably we haven't seen uh, in the Premier League. And, uh, and that's the level that we have to reach to compete with them. This season is so different, so particular. They had as well a lot of issues internally with a lot of uh, big injuries. But it's still amazing what they've done. Thank you, Mikel. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. We'll move to Roger Clark from Sky Sports. Hi, Mikel. Good to see you. Um, first of all, just picking up on what Mark was talking about, was asking you about the, the um, team news there. Is there any news on Emil Smith Rowe didn't play in the under 21 match? Is he? No, he has some discomfort in, in his hip and uh, that's why they decided to, to keep him out. But uh, I don't know, we will see today how he comes to speak with the doctors and the physios and see if he's available for training tomorrow. In terms of, of the game at the weekend and then, and then looking ahead, you have um, Slavia Prague in the, in the Europa League coming up after that. Given where you are in the league and, and your chances in Europe and so on, does the Slavia Prague game almost take priority? Over, over Liverpool? For me, the priority is, is Liverpool. We know that uh, if we want to climb on the table and have a chance to, to be in Europe next season through the Premier League, uh, we need some consistent now in the last nine games. We need to get a, a round of winning matches and the only way to do it is um, starting against Liverpool. We don't have any margin and, uh, and we have to win the game. Um, just looking at the, the Liverpool side, I know you talked about how potent they are. You, you, you played them a couple of times earlier in the season in the league and, and in, the, in the cup as, as, as well. What, what do you put down? What do you put their problems down to? That what's happened between then, when they were still looking like a, a very potent side, and now when they seem to be having all sorts of problems? I don't know. I know they want to analyse what has gone wrong for them. I can't talk about what they've done. And what they are still producing, I've seen a lot of games and, uh, and the stats will support that. They are, if not the best, the second teams in almost every department 
that us like coaches uh, have to analyze. But then this is football and the ball has to be in that net. The final action has to provide uh, a moment to win a football match. And then you have some individuals that dictate as well the quality of your team. And, um, and sometimes you cannot predict those things. So I think it's a lot of things. Um, I think it's the ch first chance we've had to speak to you since um, Sergio Aguero's announcement the other day and obviously someone you worked with, you know. Um, just give, give us a sense of, of your response to, to his announcement, to his, his standing in, in terms of the Premier League and perhaps just cheeky about now, now he's available. Is he someone like Arsenal might, might, <laughs> might be looking at? No, first of all, I think anybody that has been close to Sergio would say the same thing. Uh, I think he's been... Um, probably the main phase or one of the main three phases that has lifted that project. Um, you need some leadership, you need some quality, you need players to create moments to start to build a project uh, like they did. And, and Sergio is probably the biggest phase on, on that project. It's not only the way he plays, it's his charisma, his personality, the way he is, he's loved by everybody at that club. Uh, it's sad to live to see someone living um, like him, but I think what he's done, it will, there, it will be there like history. And uh, his future, well, where he goes, is he still doing a job elsewhere, whether it's in England or you, you still see him getting For sure. Goes? Sergio has an unique quality to see spaces where nobody else can see and, and to score goals in a, in a really easy way. So I'm sure that he will find the, the right next chapter for him. Will you be picking up the phone to him, seeing if he fancies a move to London? <laughs> no, no, Sergio, uh, we will see what happens with him in the future. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Roger. We'll go to Ian Abrahamson, TalkSport. Hi, Mikel, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, I just want to pick up on Sergio Aguero. First of all, Wayne Rooney told me yesterday, as far as the uh, best foreign player in the we see in the Premier League, probably Thierry Henry was better than Sergio Aguero. Would you, would you agree with that? Well, he's one of the best for sure. And uh, the consistency that he's shown at this level in this league, um, I think he puts him right there with the best. We can discuss who's been the best, but for me, he's one of the best. And in terms of statues outside grounds, we've been talking about that quite a lot because they're going to... Man City build a statue for Aguero, but if they're going to do that, they may as well do one for Yaya Toure and build the company. I mean, it'd be hard getting into the Etihad at some point soon, wouldn't it, avoiding all these statues? <laughs> I don't know. I think when a club wants to have a, a gesture of recognition to somebody that has changed their history, I think it's a really nice touch. Obviously, you cannot have the, the stadium full of statues, but uh, I think it's a really nice, nice thing to do if they feel it's, it's the right one. It's, it's a big week coming up for you, and, and I guess, is, is Liverpool the ideal way to try and get confidence ahead of Slavia Prague? Sorry, Ian? Is, is beating Liverpool or, trying to, or playing against Liverpool the ideal way of preparing yourself and getting confidence ahead of Slavia Prague? Absolutely, to get the morale right, the confidence right, to get some momentum right. The more games that we won, the, the team is going to be in a better state to compete in, in other competitions. So that's why my only focus is, is on Liverpool now. I know that, but obviously you're only five wins away or five games away potentially from the Champions League in terms of the Europa League. I know you might have to face Unai Emery in the semi-final, but if you look at it, that is your best way of getting into the Champions League, isn't it? That's the other way. We don't know what the best way is going to be. It would depend on our results and performances. And um, we need to go game by game and, and try to maximise every chance that we have in each of those games. And finally, just going back to the under-21s, uh, their captain was Eddie Nketiah, who had very few chances. The service team was, was, was quite limited during the, the three games. Are, are you surprised at how poorly England's under-21s played? And where do, you, where do you stand on the fact that we're, we're very unsuccessful at that age group level of football? You, you have a couple of them, obviously, at the moment, in Bakayo Sacco, Smith Rowe and Eddie Nketiah in your, in your team. No, but I think as well, the, where, where the focus is uh, at that age is in, in development. Of course, they need results, but it's true that as well, I think the Iron 20 has fit tremendously well uh, the first England squad, you know, and that's going to reflect on some players needed time as well to adapt um, to that environment, to start to compete the right way, like other players that they were there a few months ago uh, were doing and, and the coach has to get everything right there and that's, that takes time but uh, I'm not worried about that. I think uh, the way 
England is evolving as a nation in football and how much they have progressed over the years, I think it's remarkable. Brilliant stuff. Good luck this weekend, Mikhail. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. We'll go to Mark Man Bryan from PA. Morning, Mikhail. Hi, Mark. Um, the way you won this fixture last year at home to Liverpool was with a lot less possession and playing that kind of football that you seemed to adopt when you first came in. Are you now confident you can look to play your own way against them this time around? I think the game would detect that. Sometimes you have to adapt to the opponent because they're just um, better than you. And sometimes um, you can make the opponent adapt. We will see, depending on what they do, what we are able to do as well. But um, obviously the intention and and the game we want to propose is different to the one that we played um, that year. But um, obviously when you play against top quality side, sometimes you have to be able to adapt your game as well to get um, the results that you need. Being able to play your own game would be a way of, of showing your progression almost, which is, I suppose, something Jurgen Klopp has done at Liverpool. He he had those first few years building a team that he then went on to win the Champions League and Premier League with. Mm. Um, are you confident you can build a similar team at Arsenal or is it also affected, obviously, by the financial situation? I don't, I, I don't like to compare um, different projects. I think what they've done is remarkable. It's been really intelligent. The way they have managed the resources and the way they have maximized the resources has been exceptional. They've done it really, really well and credit to them. And now it's about sustaining um, that. Um, we are in different phases of that project right now, but we know exactly where we are and where we want to be. And in the first one or two phases, we had some priorities that we have to address to be in a position to now evolve the squad, evolve the team and start to compete at a different level. And this is where we are. You said about January that it was unprecedented for a top club to have to do the kind of things you did and that the summer might be the same. Mm -hmm. Would that be a case of try, trying to raise funds to bring in the players that you are keen to bring in? Yeah, obviously we need um, support uh, from everybody to try to do what we've done. And so far we had it. And uh, the commitment uh, and the vision that we all share is unquestionable. And we had a lot of meetings about that. And we are all on the same page. We know where we are and we are re very realistic about where we are. And all the things that we've done uh, have consequences because it generates some instability that is necessary to make changes. But at some stage, we need some stability now to grow and evolve the way we want to do it. And that time frame is a tricky thing because we need to win immediately. Over the summer and then into January, we saw William Saliba, Matteo Guendouzi, Lucas Torreira, Maitland-Niles, Joe Willock all leave on loan. Are they players that you all intend to bring back and will be part, given a chance in pre-season or will some of them be, be sold on, do you think? That would, that would be the thing that we have to address at the end of the season. The reason we we loaned them was because we want to obviously give them some game time and see the level that they can perform at away from here to try to develop them and then bring them back here to try to use them and be part of us. That's the first idea. After we will evaluate what they've done, what the level that they've shown and how much um, they can accomplish with the way we want to play and the squad that we have in, in our hands. Are you, are you happy with all, the way all those loan moves are going? Because if you look at someone like Lucas Torreira, he's played very little football, actually, hasn't he? I'm more happy with some than, than others, obviously, because you want to see your players playing regularly and, and it's not been the case. Thanks, Mikel. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Nick Callow from Haters. Hi, um, morning, Mikel. Can I just ask you a couple of questions about Alex Lacazette? It seems to me that he's playing some of the best football of his career. Is it a boost to you how, how well he's playing? Yes, I think he's been uh, really good. I think he's been in really good form for months now. Uh, I think he's sustaining that level. He's scoring goals and he's providing the team with something different as well. Uh, his work rate has been phenomenal and it's what we want. We need uh, those type of players uh, hitting the best level when we want to have the chance to do that because over the course of the season, we have been missing um, goals, we have been missing that creativity in the final thirds and we need those players to step in and make the difference for the team. And a couple of things I noticed during the international break about him was one, that you had him still training. There's some great pictures of him and Oba training together. That must have been a benefit. But also at the same time, people start speculating about his future. Seville, Roma, other clubs thinking maybe we can buy him with his contracts running down. 
I'm always happy when when people talk about our place and speculating that means that they are doing well and and they are getting attention from other clubs. Um, the situation with Laka will address it in the summer. Speak to him, and and just propose the future that we want. And and that's it. Up to now, now I just want players focus and only focus in performing and um, and getting the best out of them for for the team. How much would it be deciding on Laka's future about the financial aspect of giving a a senior player, a big contract, and also making room for younger players to come through. Everything is related. At the end, everything is related to where we are, how much we win, and um, and when we are playing next season. And uh, there is no exceptions, and uh, and we all need to be clear with that, and more with the context that we have right now around um, our industry.